Hey everybody, it's your old pal Chuck and I'm back with another review and today we're taking a look at from the Transformers Cyberverse series. This is Spark Armor Elite Class Grimlock with Trash Crash the Garbage Truck. Uh, so, and let me just say right off the bat, um, I got this set off of Amazon.com. Last time I checked, it's available there right now. So, I'll wait if you want to go and pick it up. Okay, that would probably long enough um it should also be hitting you know general retail sooner than later but let me also say now this is coming from someone whose only experience is the cheetor elite class said um this is the best transforming cyberverse figure i've had handled thus far i've basically handled just about all of them this is the best um, I've seen the reviews of the other Spark Armor figures. This is the best. Just just Grimlock. I mean, the armor is the armor. Now, some people have been saying that the armor is a little bit of a uh, homage to Transformers animated Rekgar. That might be true, since it is a little bit of a garbage truck. But I also think, just based on the coloring, a little wink and a nod to the 2000 Robots in Disguise line where Grim, the name Grimlock was used for a construction vehicle that was part of a combiner team. So I think it's a little wink and a nod there. Um, but enough about that and wink and nods. Let's take a look at Grimlock. Okay, so with Grimlock, we're starting off in dinosaur mode. Very nice looking dinosaur mode. Uh, it is actually based on the what we think Tyrannosaurus Rex is looked like back then now meaning it's not sitting back on its tail although you can't position it like that but the head is angled for it to lean forward like this um so it's more like this and less like a godzilla mega godzilla there is some play in the mouth here with the jaw opening and you can actually move the top of the head so you can get a nice little growl going there and if you do what i just did and shove the uh, jaw all the way up it can help get it out but um in terms of articulation you do have little ball joints here on the waggly arms that's kind of cool so uh oh and there's ball joints here in the shoulder that's more for robot mode so so to start the transformation um what i recommend is coming around the back here and if you can get a nail in and split the tail now if you can't split the tail you'll start with uh this next part and that's grabbing the top of the head, unpegging it, and folding it all the way open. Now, while we're here, let me just show you. There are tabs on the tail that will snap into place on the inside of the leg, holding it in place. And now, basically, for those of you who are older fans, can kind of figure out, um, this transformation step of the transformation is very similar to the old robots uh, R.I.D., uh, Transformers Prime Viacon, where they the whole hood and roof and rear section of the car folded up into the legs. So split the legs, they peg in three different sections, fold the head into the one part, fold this next part up. This will then uh, peg into this black section right here, but also fold it forward, uh, and then bringing it up and it will peg into there. You'll end up with this little heel piece sticking out, but that's really for the combined armor mode. Do it again on this side, and peg it into place. And just like that, you have Grimlock standing up. Uh, adjusting the camera ever so slightly will bring us to, to the torso transformation. While the arms are out, I guess you can just go ahead and fold the fists out. And kind of, it's like one of the... Few times recently that we've actually had a Grimlock with folding fists. So bring the arms down just like that. Come back here to the top of the head. Fold the dinosaur arms up. And then they want to angle in ever so slightly so they're sitting flush. Fold the jaw up just like that. Open up the chest. Rotate the chest, uh, well, I guess the back part of the dinosaur neck down and sw swivel it around so it'll reveal the robot head and then close the chest back up. And here is Grimlock 
in its robot mode. And oh boy, is this a nice looking figure. My one complaint is the head. Some people like it because it has that war in uh, war within uh, the extra like row of uh, teeth like structures on the face plate. Can rotate. That's about all it can do. As I mentioned, there's um, ball joints in the shoulders and a single bend at the elbow, but you got some deep bend there. The legs are kind of nice because you do get forward and back movement and a nice little knee bend there. Although I think that kind of does loosen up the uh, the joint. No, no, it doesn't. We're good. And you do have lateral movement, but unfortunately no type of swivel. That would have been a little extra. But so, like I said, this is the best transformation and the best Cyberverse figure I've handled thus far. Um, not a lot of excess kibble. Um, I mean, the tail pieces, I, I, they pig into place. So, really, I think they thicken out the legs a little and add a little design. Um, obviously, there can be extra deco and stuff like that. But just the fact that it's revealed hands, no augmented gimmicks or anything, it's really cool. So we'll pause, we're going to come back and take a quick look at Trash Crash. Okay, I wanted to uh, take a look at Trash Crash real quick because the instructions um, really aren't that clear on how the armor transforms. There's a few more steps involved than uh, the usual League class figure, which is just uh, peg it into the back and flip it over. Well, first you are going to peg it into the back of Grimlock. But there's folding this panel down. Now the instructions just show you sp uh, separating what will be the arm section and fanning it out. What they don't show you is, or don't really explain clearly, there are two gray sections right there. Those need to be pushed forward into uh, slots next to the head. This will allow the arms to hang down in position as well as spreading open the chest and then from here you just uh when you uh fold the whole thing forward and you see it, it is a little complicated to do because then once that's down you bring the whole uh, section see, see how very it's on a hair trigger you plug it in and then you bring this whole section down and that's how it'll sit and this will fold up like that. Uh, let me show it to you from the front so you can get a better view. And yeah, it is, like I just, like I've said multiple times, a hair trigger. So you spread the arms like this, bring it, peg them into those slots, and that chest will open. But you got to be very careful handling it because it will spring open very quickly. And then it'll just... Yeah, you, you can just return it back to the position it was in. Close everything up. It does peg together. Uh, unfortunately, I've tried like transforming it before putting Grimlock up, attaching it to Grimlock, and it doesn't work as well. So here's Grimlock. Bring the arms down to the side like this. Two ports on the back. Peg in just like so. Flip that panel down. Separate the arms. Like I've said, peg them into place. That will reveal the whole section. Bring it down. Uh, you, there, it will, to some extent, peg into place or detach from the back like it's doing now. There we go. Uh, bring those arms down. This is, unfortunately, the worst part of the transformation. And then flip that back panel all the way down. And here's Grimlock. And boy, are you glad you have those heels. Just the camera a little. And the arms sit in on a little bit of an angle. These claws are on gravity, so if you have it standing like this, they'll flip out. But if you start to move it, they'll pop back in. Um, Grimlock's head with the helmet here can rotate. Sort of like a little bit of a Optimus Prime-ish type of head, don't you think? Um, but yeah, it, like I said, uh, putting the armor on is more complex than it really needs to be. Um, I mean, again, I've only handled this and Cheetor, 
but this is far more complicated than a Cheetor. Um, those heels really do make a difference with it standing, and I like the fact that they're just out. You know, you don't have to fiddle with them folding them up. Um, if you do look at the box, there, this black section here should be orange. And really, his arms should be able to fit in to the, this section here and become articulated bits. I think, you know, I understand with the Elite class, they wanted to do a, uh, like some sort of more adult, well, I shouldn't say adult, but like a, a more involved gimmick. And doing it with a spring action kind of does that. But I think if they stayed with the basic concept of taking the secondary vehicle apart and putting the armor on, it would have worked a lot better. So I'll pause and I'll give you my final thoughts. I think Grim Grimlock and Trash, Trash Crash are a great set. Ooh, I'm Fossil in the wrong syllable. Um, and definitely work a pickup. Yes, there are some issues, as I've mentioned, putting Trash Crash on Grimlock. But once you figure out what to do and how to do it properly from this video, I hope, uh, it's actually not that bad. Now, unfortunately, it does lock Grimlock, Grimlock up a little, um, but it kind of looks cool. And, you know, you'll really just be using it to bash figures around. The core Grimlock figure, as I've said multiple times already, is fantastic and the best of the line. And really, for the $24.99 that you'd probably end up paying for this, it's worth it for that Grimlock figure. Now, who knows um, what they're going to do going forward. Maybe we'll get a, a Grimlock in the basic line. Don't know. But I do find it interesting that now there's a Ultra Class, Ultimate Class, Scout Class. And this is sort of like a warrior scale type of Grimlock. All with different transformations, all that do different things. So if you're a fan of Grimlock and want a representation of him in Cyberverse, um, you have some options. And in my opinion, this is the best option. This is your old pal Chuck for Grimlock and Trash Crash. We will see you next time.